Well, I'm joined now from Tel Aviv by the Israeli Prime Minister's spokesman, Mark Regev. Who is investigating the shooting dead by Israeli forces of Salim Shamali? I, I, I'd urge that if, uh, if anyone has information that is relevant, that they come forward and speak to our judge, advocate general, the highest military man who deals with these sort of investigations. Obviously, if there are allegations of misbehavior by Israeli Israelis investigated, we can't rely on hearsay from political activists. I urge people to come forward. The Israeli army, like other Western armies, like NATO armies, holds itself to a very high professional standard. So you're saying nobody is currently investigating one of the most notorious shootings of the military incursion that was widely circulated around the world. Now, now someone has come forward now and has spoken, he says, to some of the Israeli soldiers involved, and they make very clear allegations that you just heard about the conditions under which they could open fire. Now, you've heard those allegations. Are you concerned? Do you believe there should with, be an investigation? Yes. Well, first of all, First of all, I, d I don't think a YouTube put out by activists is necessarily objective reality, as you yourself know. But once again, uh, the person speaking He's had no direct soldier, knowledge. He's a former soldier, not just an activist. He served his country. Others. And I would urge, I would urge, uh, you said he was a, an activist, didn't you? Or the or reporter said so, at least that's what I heard. But if he has information, it's his duty, it's his obligation. We have a very independent judicial branch of the army which is very strong and independent in Israel. And if people have information, they must come forward. So it would be the army investigating the army, is that right? Well, to be fair, that's exactly what happens in all NATO forces. That what ha that's what happened if there are complaints about UK soldiers or French soldiers. Do you think Israel should be held to a separate standard than anyone else? Do you know who gave the order to shoot this man? Well, first of all, once again, you're talking about a video that was put out by activists. We're not sure we have the whole story. Are you sure you have the whole story? Absolutely not. But what we do know is that there is video suggesting that a man was shot dead. His relatives have spoken, saying he is dead. So on first principles, we can assume a man has been shot dead. This was what a very notorious event in the in the war and you're telling me no one's looking into it and if anybody looks into it it will be the army investigating the army well let's be fair i don't think it's fair for you to hold as a british journalist to hold israel to a standard that you don't hold your own country to in all nato forces whether it's britain france germany italy when there are investigations like this, they are done by the army with an independent branch that looks into these things. Now, what is different from Israel from the United Kingdom is that our military investigations are also open to independent civilian review. In other words, all these cases can ultimately go to the Israeli Supreme Court, which is internationally known for its uh, independence and its professionalism. But once again, I think you have to be very careful when you base testimony solely on those of activists and of uh, YouTube put out by, uh, by also a group of activists. Do you don't think that's not wise? Obviously. Can you tell me then, can you tell me then how many Israeli soldiers have been prosecuted in the past incursion? I can tell you that in Israel we hold ourselves to a very high standard. We had a situation where a full general who was about to be appointed chief of staff, that's our highest man in uniform, couldn't take the position and had to resign after being appointed because in a real estate uh, local house, how many council zoning and planning, apparently he filled out a form incorrectly. So we do hold ourselves, our generals, our, our colonels, our captains, how many all soldiers our men have, have been prosecuted in the framework of the law. Uh, over the years, of course, there have been many. Uh, you, how many? I mean, do you... I don't recall the number, but I can tell you in Israel we have a very fiercely independent judiciary. Okay. How many British soldiers have been prosecuted for things that happened in Iraq? Do you know? When we, when we spoke to you about the killing of the boys on the beach, you again said we didn't know what the facts were, you didn't know whether there was anything to investigate. You know a lot more of the facts now. Who's investigating that incident? Oh, we know that it was a stake of m mistaken fire. And our president, and now our past president, but he was president at the time, Shimon Peres publicly apologized. When we do make a mistake, we admit it. But you have to be, make a differentiation between what is something that is uh, criminal and something that is an accident in warfare. 
My Prime Minister spoke today uh, about a well-known case in the Second World War where your RAF was targeting the Gestapo headquarters in Copenhagen and the bombs accidentally hit uh, uh, children next door. Now, that's an accident of war. It's a tragedy, but it's not a war crime. It was just an accident of war. And you have to make a clear distinction here. The rules of war do so clearly in international law. Mark Regev, thank you for joining us.